Welcome to B2B Marketers on a Mission, a podcast for change makers where we question the conventional, debunk marketing myths, provide actionable tips, think differently, disrupt industries, and take your marketing to a new level. From improving your campaigns to making you a better marketer, these are the inspirational stories that will help us change the way we think and approach B2B marketing one conversation at a time. This podcast is brought to you by I'm Blake Consulting, helping you to stand out in the market and drive revenue to your B2B business. And now your host, Christian Klepp. All right, folks, welcome everyone to this episode of B2B Marketers in the Mission. This is a show where we help you to question the conventional, think differently, disrupt your industry, and take your marketing to new heights. This is your host, Christian Klepp. And today I'm joined by someone on a mission to get customer videos that convert and to find the one ring of power. <laughs> Coming to us from Raleigh, North Carolina, USA, Alexander Ferguson. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Christian. Glad to be here. Not to be confused with Sir Alex Ferguson, the former Manchester United coach, but oh. Alexander, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on the show. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Me too. All Thank right. You. So, um, you know, before we before we head out into the Shire, um, let's kick off this conversation with uh, a topic that I think has become part of your professional mission, and that's how to craft great customer success stories that are interesting and engaging. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but interesting and engaging are not necessarily uh, words that are characteristic of B two B at no. uh, you know most <laughs> times. So. Why do you think most customer success stories in B2B fall flat? They often are either vague or just generic praise of the company, or they're just plain boring. <laughs> and it really just makes then the entire story invisible to the prospect. It doesn't mean anything. They really lack an emotionally engaging narrative. Uh, in, the, in the B2B space, I feel like we often feel like we're Vulcans from, from Star Trek. Not to change it up to another uh, franchise away from Lord of the Rings, but uh, I feel like the, we feel like, oh, emotion is bad. Logic and reasoning, that's, that's all the way. That's what's important. I don't think that's right, though. I, I feel like B2B companies are more like, they should be more like Spock, you know, a 50-50 split, where, where logic and reason, they're important, uh, but you don't want to disregard the, the power of an emotionally engaging narrative. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm going to share something with you that uh, I asked. Well, I asked the guest the same question. Um, you know, someone that came on the show previously, and this guest answered the question about you know B two B being boring by well, I suppose it depends on your definition of boring, because it also depends on. Um, who this, whether it's video or whether it's some other form of content, it depends on who this is meant to appeal to, right? For instance, and I'm not saying, I, I'm just throwing in this caveat, I'm not saying that this group is boring, but like, um, for example, engineers, right? If you're appealing to engineers, then perhaps something that is very structured in a very intricate and uh, systematic format in, in some kind of like logical order is something that would, really appeal to that demographic and if it's highly technical as well i mean what, what are your thoughts on that when it comes to an industry specific it's like when when you resonate with the content that person then to someone else it could be boring um but to them it's either fascinating interesting there's still a lot of emotions connected to it because they're in that world so being able to unpack and and tease out whatever that particular industry story, I, there's definitely value in that that others may seem deem uninteresting, but it's not. You handled that question like a champ. Well done. <laughs> um, but speaking of which, that was a great segue into the next question, which I, I have no doubt that you will answer this really well. Um, mistakes that you've seen B2B marketers make when crafting customer success stories. So, and... The way I'd like you to answer this, if you can, Alexander, is what, have you, what kind of mistakes have you seen and how should marketers address these mistakes? 
Mistake number one, I would say, is probably lacking specificity and detail. Uh, missing the, the, the unique problem or, or use case for, for that, that story. Um, and this is often as you're just talking about the, the high level, what it is and what, what features, what it was. But being able to fix this, how do you address that? I would say ask more questions when you're interviewing and pulling out the story with your customers. Ask more who questions or how questions or why questions, when, where, not just the what. And that'll help unpack and really pull in all the details that grounds the story in, in, a, in a reality. So when your, your prospective buyer's listening to it, they don't feel like it's just this surface level, well, maybe in some theoretical world, this could help someone, but they see the the, the realness of it. So that would I say is uh, mistake number one. Uh, number two, I would say is kind of connected to what I opened with emotion. Often many are missing emotion. And it's like, okay, how do you address that? How do you pull out emotion in a B2B environment? That's tough. There's no foolproof plan here, but I would say asking follow-up questions of your customer like, oh, interesting. Okay, so you've had to re-enter your data into your accounting software five times that, that lowered your efficiency, your customer, your uh, workforce efficiency. How did that make you feel? Was that was that frustrating? Did that make you angry, overwhelmed? How is your team feeling about all this? These follow-up feeling questions can then unpack that emotion. Um, the third one I would say mistake is is no demonstration of tangible impact or really that that before and after transformation again it's just the hey we worked with them and we use these features uh you know go for them but really showing those before and after states it can be difficult to get these uh sometimes because your customer may not know uh, and you have to do a little bit of the prep work ahead of time, just like you do prep work for these uh, uh, discussions and you craft questions and you already know how to introduce someone versus just showing up and saying, oh, here it is. By doing that little uh, lifting ahead of time for them, it can make the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just to recap the three mistakes, so lacking specificity and detail, um, then the emotion um, piece and then the third one is no demonstration of tangible impact. And I think that one is really hits the nail on the head. I mean, you know, you never want to have a customer success story where the outcome was, oh, they loved it. And it was great. <laughs> it lacks but all like your, the, the power yeah. of, of that transformation. It's like, that's yeah. what everyone, why they listen to yes. stories. Is someone who goes from rags to riches. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But to your point, I think, uh, the, the outcome that a lot of uh, people are looking for when they watch these videos are, quant you know, quantifiable results. And, uh, you know, m more often than not, those are those are not that easy to obtain, I think was your point. Yes. And that's where, like, in some companies, they, they either don't want to share it or it's right. not quantifiable. And so then you have to find other ways to quantify it. Like, it could be an emotional state um, that you can focus on or a physical uh, change that happened. Um, yeah. But, of course, the best is still KPIs and numbers because we're logic and reason focused B2B companies. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, ooh, don't rock the boat there, man. <laughs> All right. You... You can't define or develop good customer success stories without conducting uh, the relevant research, right? So talk to us about what marketers should be looking for when they're conducting research and how can they incorporate this into their customer success stories? This really ties into what we were just digging into around this before and after state. I would say in customer research, fully understanding or, or uh, unpacking the problems you know how well do you know your customers problems um i find as part of the customer story process you can uh really get great insight on this and give direction and have more direction on what should you drill down deeper on um their maybe even from previous use cases or problems they were fe feeling and experiencing uh, this then helps the story much later because you're you have that direction to say okay this is where we're gonna we're gonna take this this interview um Another thing I would say is on the, the results side too, um, being able to uh, do some of the heavy lifting. Maybe if you're a software platform, you could uh, pull the numbers for them ahead of time. So doing some some research of, of that data analysis, having these pre-conversations -conversa uh, with them, understanding what's the most important numbers and metrics that they're tracking. Because uh, you may think it's one number, but it could be a very different number or, or metric that they're focused on or that's important to them in their role. 
Um, in addition, to that you could be uh, talking with other departments, heads, and so seeing the larger organization uh, achievements or goals that they're trying to, to make. And then you're piecing this puzzle together for them uh, in this customer research before you do the, the interview itself. I really love how you brought that up, Alexander, because I, I, you know, I, I sometimes see this happen, and uh, a lot of people out there don't realize um, how much preparation work is required um, to conduct these interviews and to conduct this research. You know, it's it's not a simple question of just okay, let's just put together a bunch of questions and then let's uh, let's find some customers that we can interview and then off we go. And you know, in reality, it's it's not that it's not that simple, right? So I think that preparation work, like you said, or, um, you know, I hate to use this term, but, you know, here we are, um, do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> makes a difference. It Absolutely. makes a difference. Absolutely. All right. Well, this is more of the, uh, this next question is more of the uh, devil's advocate question. And I think it's a really important one because we discussed this during the uh, pre-interview conversation. A lot of marketers are facing this out there, and you, you just brought it up a couple of minutes ago, right? Sales is very, you know, they're 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 guarding their customers very closely because you know those are those customers are very precious to them, and they don't really want anyone outside their department or business unit to be talking to these people, right? That being said, that does not uh, further our cause or move us further along down the river. Excuse me, I'm going back to these um, analogies again, but how? Can marketers get not just the customers, but the sales to buy in to this important exercise of crafting customer success stories? How do they deal with, as we just said, sales saying like, no, we don't want you to talk to the customers directly? Before you can really get a, a testimonial or customer story program off the ground, you, you need that buy-in from sales, from customer service without a doubt. Part of it is painting the picture for them and <laughs> you have to market to them, uh, easing their fears and concerns that this will, could take away a potential future sale or this is too much of a, a lift. I just had a conversation the other day with um, a marketing leader who it it took a little while for, for them to get the buy-in, but once they did, once their sales team started to see, oh, wow, actually, this is a great customer touch point. Uh, they, they like to talk about it. They wanted to, to share their experience. It removed that fear. So it may take a little bit of uh, uh, work ahead of time with the, the painting the picture and the vision for the sales team. But once you've got that buy-in, uh, by uh, then then it really paves the way to make it, the rest of it much easier. Because ideally, already in the contracting process and onboarding, you're mentioning to the customer, you're talking to the customer, hey, we're excited for this. I think we're going to you know, have a great outcome. And once we get there, we'd love to share that story your story of us working together. So they already know in their mind that this is coming. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I had a follow-up question for you, and, uh, and I think this, this might have been where you were going with that. Um, you know, I think an important part of the process of planning and developing strategy and marketing is to conduct customer research. And as a result of that customer research, you develop the relevant buyer personas and you map out that that buyer's journey with the respective uh, stages, um, you know, and you highlight or you illustrate the different triggers and then the different touch points and why those touch points are relevant within that specific journey. Okay, I say all of that um, to ask, um, how useful do you think it would be for marketers to show that research and that, for example, that buyer's journey map to the sales to get them to understand, well, this is the reason why we need that because we, you know, we did the research and we we identified these touch points and th these are the things that we we saw were important to the people that you guys are trying to reach out to. So uh, your thoughts on that? Like creating a case study for your sales team on the reason for a customer story program, a customer case study program, via testimony program, it, it's... I think being able to show them that if we get this buyer persona, we capture this story, that it's yeah. going to help your job, right. uh, help to make your the sales so much exactly. uh, easier through that. I absolutely think it's a great idea. Yeah, because like you know, the last thing you want them to think is like, oh no, <clears throat> you need a customer, you need, you need to interview a customer, you need a testimonial. That 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 sounds like more work for me. Mm. It means that I'm going to go. I I need to go out there and have that conversation with a customer on your behalf. So you know, just um. I wouldn't even say flip the script, but just make them understand that, like, no, actually, we're helping to make this easier for you. 
right? Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's also a conversation starter, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Like if you if they are able to show these success story videos um, to potential prospects and like, okay. Right. Yes. I, I think often a, a, a big barrier for sales or even for the end customer is lack of clarity on the process. When they when they aren't sure how you're going to get this case study, what's involved, what's the process, how much time is it going to take, how are you going to make it happen, then it's just this automatic, you know what, I, this just sounds like too much work. <laughs> but when you bring specificity, clarity, detail, hey, this is how long it's going to take, this is how we're going to do it, and this is how it's going to happen, you're like, oh, okay, that I, that, that I can communicate, that I can share, that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we get to the part in the conversation where we're talking about actionable tips. And, you know, you know the drill. You've been on the show before. Um, let's appreciate that, you know, you can't do all of this stuff in 24 hours, right? This exercise takes time. But I would say if somebody were listening out there to this conversation that you and I are having about creating and developing better customer success stories, uh, what are maybe three to five things that they can do right now. Some of this is going to be kind of recapping some of the things we talked about earlier, but I feel like the first thing is having a clear plan uh, on on how you're going to ask, how you're going to capture, and how you're going to share those stories. No plan, and this will forever be on the back burner. (laughs) The the second thing is I'm remembering that the story isn't about you or your company. You got to remember who the hero is in this which is your customer. And you're really just the the guide on there. Cause I see too many stories that fail because it's the wrong uh, defining of who the hero is. Uh, Don't underestimate the value of of visuals. I I would say um, I'm a little biased, but I think video is an instant level up uh, by having being able to have that face, the voice, the credibility in today's age of authenticity, Uh, but also being able don't miss the opportunity to integrate product footage or, or content footage into this will be a little bit of a midi a mini product video itself, if done well. Uh, and then there comes the versatility of, of this asset. That's another reason why I like video. So keep in mind how you're going to repurpose the story. So maybe you have a two minute version, already have a plan for a 30 second version, be able to leverage the transcript um, and be able to use it in all the different places. Because <laughs> the way people, people consume content today is, is not just in one format. And I would say the last thing to keep in mind would be investing in a good thumbnail. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Beast, one of the world's uh, most popular YouTubers out there, I saw where he reportedly spent upwards of $10,000 on developing that that preview still image. And I think too often these great stories are hid somewhere on a website, uh, on on a back-end page, and never get seen because the right imagery, the right placement, whether it's in your email campaigns, whether it's on social YouTube, People don't know that, oh, I should watch this. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm glad you brought that up about visuals because it's such a great segue into the next question where I'd like you to give us an example of how you helped save a company from boring customer success stories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, there was one uh, fellow, Mark, he was a, a director of marketing, B2B company in the, the customer, um, in the life science space. Couple challenges that, that that they had. One is why they were getting stories in the first place is getting engagement, getting their their potential buyers to just pay attention to them. Uh, that was a major issue. At the same time, being able to get the customers to agree to get on a video because he knew that if they shared other customer stories to prospective buyers, it would help. But getting them to agree. Uh, so multi multi purpose here of how they approached. It. I thought this was an interesting story to share of another angle. Um, there was an awards uh, going on for that in their ver- particular vertical. So they actually asked their customers about interviewing them for this upcoming award and using that uh, partly for the entry and promotion of it. So positioning them as a, as a hero uh, and what they've been able to achieve. Uh, and then, of course, Mark's company was was the guy, the trusted guy there who to help them achieve and get to that award. Um, so in the same interview, they, they were able to do two things at the same time, accomplish both promoting them, uh, and they were wanting to be promoted as well as they got great con- content for an insight and customer testimonial, um, out, out of that, that story, because there was a lot of excitement of where they were to where they were able to get to and achieving this award. Um, they used it mostly in the email campaigns so that, uh, they have a great email list and they, they saw 
I think it was a 500% increase in click-through rate because of them focusing on that story, great thumbnail, um, and then being able to to get that engagement from those from those buyers. Just give me a second here. Like, <laughs> um, great points. I'd like to just go back to a, uh, to a couple of them. I mean, first of all, 500% click-through rate. Well done. What an achievement. Um, the second one, I, I, I thought that the... Um, the awards piece or this, uh, you know, the, the awards initiative, what a brilliant approach, right? What a great way to put, to, to push the customer into the spotlight, right? And give them, I mean, to use the radio term airtime, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I think, and then the other point that you mentioned, you've mentioned this a few times now in this conversation, which I think uh, is worth um, jamming on a little bit further, if you will, positioning the customer as the hero, mm -hmm. right? And we talk about this a lot on, on this show because I bring a lot of uh, folks on that are either in, you know, in the same area of expertise uh, that you're in or copywriters and content marketers, et cetera. It's about uh, that hero's journey, right? Um, there's a book out there called Building Your Story Brand by Donald Miller. Um, and there's also, I call it a formula, but you, you know, you can call it whatever you want, but it's the, it's the hero's journey. And that was, um, basically something that, uh, the, uh, professor of mythology called Joseph Campbell coined. Mm. And, um, it was because he studied all these different myths and legends from different cultures around the world. And it basically, they all had the same pattern. And I believe there are seven steps and you probably know them, right? So it's the hero has a problem. And then goes on a journey to find that solution. Meets a guide who gives him or her um, a, a plan of action, encourages them to take action so that they achieve success and they avert failure. You look at every, not even just Hollywood movie. Well, these days it might it might be different, but um, you look at every major Hollywood production. You look at any. <laughs> Case in point, Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? Um, any any Greek mythology, right? Any any story from Greek mythology, they all follow that pattern, right? And uh, you're really right to point this out that the hero, well, you know, bringing this back to B two B now, the hero is not the company, right? It's the it's the customer, <laughs> and the story will be better for it when you yes. when you know. When you know who the hero, real hero hero is, absolutely, absolutely. All right, next question. Oh, you know we're trying so hard to avoid talking about this, but here we go. AI. <laughs> it seems to be impacting almost every aspect of our work as marketers, and it also per, you know it's also spread across other industries as well, right? So here comes the question, and it's a it's a basically a two pronged question, right? So do you think that AI should be used? in crafting customer success stories? And if yes, how? Absolutely. <laughs> but in the right way, yeah. I think it's great coming up, uh, uh, helping with certain things, but not other things. So not great with creative things necessarily from scratch. Well, it's not there yet. Um, but it's great at helping you ideate, summarize, organize, repurpose. Um, there's a lot of, of software tools out there that are integrating AI into their product. Uh, like if you look at the customer research side, um, there's some some tools that you can use there, like um, Dovetail um, has some great insights. Um, Grain and Rev both have the ability here in these is to help analyze, give summaries. You can even ask questions of the customer interview and, and, and it'll help you pull out that insight. Then you as a human can figure out what you want to do with it. Um, you got standalone tools to help analyze or write new content. Uh, Chat GPT, everyone knows that. Jasper, Quillbot. These help you can come up with maybe headlines for the story, help you generate story outlines um, based on the, the transcript or just repurpose or create new social content. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these in, in those functions. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, you know, I always say there's a place and time for AI and it's not... I, I think it would be foolish to completely dismiss artificial intelligence and throw it out the window and say, no, don't use it. But I think it's to your point. It's, um, I, I mean, currently with its current capabilities, it's a, it, it's a support function, right? Like, I mean, don't use AI 
uh, don't replace what people are actually good at and doing with AI. I think that was your point, correct? <laughs> yes. Don't you don't need to replace people. There, there's a lot of tools that are coming out um, that are generative AI when it comes to yes. video, and that either people are are uh, afraid of it. That's a very common one, and which is why yeah. real authentic stories and people and when they tell like this is a real thing that it, it feels so good. <laughs> mm. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, Alexander, I kind of feel that you've been on your soapbox all this time, but please uh, stay up there a little bit longer, <laughs> well, at least for this question. All right. Um, so let's just narrow it down to today's topic about creating those great uh, customer success stories that are interesting and engaging. But what's a status quo that you passionately disagree with regarding this topic and why? Status quo. It's okay if if B2B content is emotionless and boring. <laughs> Faceless facts and data, that, uh, that's all that matters. No, I, I feel like we need to be able to bring more emotion. Uh, real people, real stories. Uh, as we were just talking about, we're in an age where so much is fake and generated. And so the more human and authentic we can put uh, have our marketing, the stronger I think the, the attraction of today's buyer will be. And I think customer stories are that key to to unlocking this if if done correctly. That's such a great point. I mean, like, just look at look at LinkedIn, right? I mean, how often do you get people or bots reaching out to you on LinkedIn Messenger or on e in mail, right? Or how often do you see posts where you see um, engagement that looks um, well otherworldly, <laughs> like for lack of a better description? But you're like, yeah, that. That that does not, not sound yeah that does not sound like a like an actual person that's engaging with this with this post right so it's AI right so and and I think in this day, day and age where even like videos I mean there's AI generated visuals of this and videos of that um, isn't it a, a a breath of fresh air to just have something that's real. <laughs> Yes, it's like yes, thank you. Something real, something we were just talking before the show of like um, when when people mess yeah. up or something's not perfect. That's yeah. great. Let me see more bloopers. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes, and there, there will be a bloopers reel in the works at some point. I promise. <laughs> All right, folks, the moment we've been waiting for the bonus question, right? And I do remember from your last interview how we were talking about Lord of the Rings. And uh, that franchise and trilogy and 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 whatnot, and I couldn't help myself but think of a question that is linked to Lord of the Rings. So here it is: Why? <clears throat> in the third Lord of the Rings movie, The Return of the King, right? So there's the scene where Lord Elrond um, shows up at the uh, Rohirrim camp to hand um, Aragorn the sword. So he's encouraging Aragorn to go to the Dwimmelberg to um, rally the army of the dead. And then Aragorn says, the dead answer to no one. And, and Lord Elrond said, they will answer to the king of Gondor. And then that's when, he that's when he shows him the sword. And he says, this is Anduril, forged from the shards of... Narsil. <laughs> that one I got. Well done. <laughs> oh, love Lord of the Rings. It's so good. Alexander, we can keep on going about Lord of the Rings too, but once again, thank you so much for coming on the show again. It was a it was an honor to host you. And uh, please, a uh, quick introduction to yourself and how folks out there can get in touch with you, especially if they're trying to save the world from boring customer success stories. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, a little about myself. Um, 15 years, I've been focused on video. Um, co-founded three different different brands, and I and I've been serving lots of different companies, but I'm, I'm doing lots of different videos. But I think customer stories. The, the, these are like the, the shards of Narsil. They're like the the, the thing that could really uh, help in this in this war building buyer trust. And I'm just on a mission to tell everyone get more customer stories. It's not hard, and I can help. Yes, and renewed shall be blade that was broken. <laughs> Alexander, once again, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks again for coming on. Take care, stay safe, and talk to you soon. Thanks, Christian.